So Anne is considering investing eighty-five thousand in term deposit in one of the two banks. The first bank offers an annual interest rate of three percent compounding monthly. So over here, what is this amount? What is this amount? This is the current investment. Yes, present value. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a present. Sir, when do we? When do we decide when it's PMT or PV? Okay, so when we are investing for only once, okay, it is like one-time investment, okay. Then it is present value. When we are doing it regularly, okay, then it is PMT. PMT means you can consider PMT as payment per month. Regularly can be yearly also, like every year I am depositing, but PV is only once. Okay. Okay, we got it. Okay, moving forward with this particular question. So there are two scenarios: Bank A and Bank B. Bank A is offering three percent compounding monthly. And Bank B is offering fixed payment to fifty per month. That is like a simple interest. Now, what is our first question saying? Calculate the amount that would be in the account in the first bank at the end of five years. So, when we are talking about compound interest, you can go for your GDC and do the financial solver. And solve this question. And when they are saying fixed payment, like simple interest, every year you are getting, then you can just simply multiply two fifty rupees every month. That means twelve months, and twelve months means one year. This much amount you are going to get in one year. For how many years? Uh, you are going to get in end of first year. So I don't need to multiply anything else. So that will give me the amount of the first year for the second bank. Is that thing clear? Yes, sir. So for the second bank, at the end of first year would be two fifty multiplied by twelve. And uh, that is the interest part. And if I add this value, so they are asking what will be the amount in the account. So plus eighty five thousand. A very simple answer is eighty eight thousand dollar. Is that thing clear? Yes, sir. Now for the first part. I need to make the table N I quickly make the table and try to fill it. So time period is one year, interest three percent, everything is clear. PPY is one because we are making one payment. CPY means how many times compounding is happening in a year. Compounding is happening monthly, so therefore it is twelve months. Twelve, and they are asking at the end of the year, so end. So answer we are getting over here is eighty seven thousand five eighty five. Yes or no? Yes, sir. No, that's the first answer. See, can you say you got four marks for these two things? Now, looking at question number two now. Question number two. Write down an expression. Now, over here they are asking us to write a expression. That means we have to use the old formula. Remember, I taught you in the last class. A equals to P 
bracket one plus r upon hundred power t. How much time it is? Okay. So formula is we have to multiply by k over here, k over here. Remember this formula in the last class I discussed. Yes, sir. Now write down an expression: the amount in the account if the buffers bank at the end of nth year. So they are saying n. So we'll multiply time. They are saying is n. So p is nothing but present value, pv. Okay. So what is the present value in the beginning? I think eighty-five thousand. Rate is three percent upon hundred, and time is n. Yes or no? Yeah. Time is n. Now, what is k? K is compounding. Okay. How much compounding it is happening? You tell me. What is compounding? Monthly, CPY. yearly. Sorry. CPY is that one. So your track will. Uh... Yeah, CPY. K is CPY basically. So what is it? Well. Well. So I will write over here. Twelve. And write over here twelve in the denominator. Understood. So that is my yes, expression. Sir. That is my expression for the first bank. Is that thing clear? You can use your calculator to write this thing in a more sophisticated manner. Eighty-five thousand. Once you solve this thing, one plus three upon twelve hundred, you will get a. Uh, if we divide that thing, one plus zero point. 0, 0, 0, 5 power 12 n. So why we are writing this in expression so that we get a graph out of it. Any doubt in this? Second part is same thing we have to do for second bank. Bank number two. This was bank number one. Bank number two. Now, bank number two is what he is doing. Every month, we are getting 250. Yes or no? Yes. Every month, we are getting 250. Dollar. So, it is nothing but repeated addition. 250 plus 250 plus 250. What should I do at the end? Amount. Amount is principal plus interest. How much interest I'm getting? Principal was 85,000. 85,000 was my amount. And how much interest I'm getting? I'm getting $250. But I'm not getting only once. I'm getting it 12 times in a year. For how many years? 10 years. So how do you know n years? It is given over here. Can you see that? N years. Yes, sir. Clear? So my yeah. expression becomes 85,000 plus 250 into 12 is 3,000. So 3,000 N. So this is my first expression. This is my second expression. I hope it is clear now. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. This formula we use for simple interest. This formula we use for compound interest. Now, let me just take duplicate of that, bring it down. Okay. Now, we have to do third part. Calculate the year in which the amount in the first bank becomes the greater than the second bank. What we will do in this case, you tell me. Any idea? How do we do C part? Quickly.
Yes, no, say something. No, sir. Okay. See, we have what they are trying to say calculate the year in which the amount in the first bank will become greater than the second bank. So they are saying amount in this bank, amount in first bank. So amount in first bank, amount in second bank. So amount in first bank will greater than the amount in second bank. So when amount, the expression, this expression, will be greater than this expression. Make sense? So yes. 85,000. So we will solve this thing 0 0.0025 power 12 n greater than 85,000 plus 3,000 n. Now you will solve using n solve. Remember what answer we were getting last year, uh, last class? Once we input this thing in n solve, what we were getting, n value? We got zero. We got zero. Now, what did I explain? Why we are not getting any other value? Because we have to use, in that case, graph. Remember? I told yes. you to use graph. Now, once we will use graph, so I did that question, so I'm not going to waste that time. You can use graph. This particular thing, I'll just use that as a highlighter, a blue color. This is a in power form, so it will go something like this. Okay. It will go like this. And this point is zero point, okay, and eighty five thousand. Now, second line, how will second line look like? This line, this is a straight line, it will go like a straight line, and it will go from the same point, okay. Once you do that. So what NSOL is giving us, NSOL is giving us the first intersection, but we want second intersection. When is the second intersection happening? Making sense? Yes, so after the first comma second intersection. Yes, so NSOL is not useful in this particular case because it is giving us zero. And so is giving us only the first intersection. Now, the question is saying, when will be the blue line will be above the green line? So I want to solve this thing. Once you plot this on graph, you will get that it will be somewhere around 10.6. So 10.6 is the meeting point. I need a whole number. So just after 10.6, you will see that there is a number, whole number, which is 11. So therefore, after 11 years, so after 11 years or 11th year onward, the amount in the first bank will be more than the second bank. I hope it is clear now. Is that thing clear? Yes, sir. So you need graph for this thing. Now, shall we move on? I'll give you time to take screenshot and do it later on. Okay. Okay. Next. Next question is calculate the interest that Anne has earned if she invests in the first bank for 10 years. Now they have given us 10 years and they are only asking interest. So do you know the formula for interest? Interest is what is the final amount minus what was my principal. Basically, if I talk in terms of GDC, it is final value minus present value. Is that thing clear? Yes, 
so she is investing in the first bank so quickly use gdc and find out the final value for the first bank for 10 years okay so what are you going to put in n 10 n is 10 i is 3% Present value is 85,000. PMT is zero. We are not making any more payments. Future value we have to find. PPY, how many times you are making payment? How many times you are making payment? Uh, so can you just roll up and answer the question? Okay. Yeah. So one time. Is this one? Yeah. One. Yeah. Compounding is happening. Well, in the beginning, since yeah, the beginning, the question is saying 12 times monthly investing yeah. is happening. Yeah. Now, the question is asking uh, at the end, if nothing is mentioned, end. Now, what is the yeah. future value you are getting in this case? Quickly insert this thing in GDC and tell me. One one four six nine five point zero. One one four nine uh six nine five. Yes, six nine Very five. Point That's it. Zero five. Yeah, yeah. You can do L two decimal. Now I will solve this thing. So interest, what I'm going to get is future value is what one one four six nine five. Minus eighty five thousand. That much amount I have invested. So once I subtract this thing, I will get the dollar value as twenty nine thousand six ninety five. Okay. Now why I'm rounding off every time? Because question in the beginning itself it is saying all answer correct to nearest whole number. Okay. Okay. That's why I'm rounding off every time. Now, similarly, we will do for the second part. So what I'm going to do, this was the D part first. Now I'm going to do second. What she would earn if she has invested in second bank. So can you tell me what she will get in second bank amount? Amount equals to 85,000 she paid in the beginning. How much she is getting in second bank? 250 every month for 10 years. Yes. Okay. So if I multiply all of this, which would be $1,15000. So interest is what is the final amount? One one five triple zero minus eighty five thousand. So how much interest we are getting? Thirty thousand we are getting. Is the question clear? Yes, sir. I hope we are done with all the parts. So that is it. This is a very important question for paper two, paper two style of question.